The International Space Station is used by all of the partner space agencies for scientific research that can't be done in an environment where gravity is dominant. In the case of some medical experiments, the weightlessness allows cells to behave in ways that help researchers learn about the nature of cancer cells, which is information that can help in the fight against the disease. One recent example of that is an experiment known as cell box thyroid cancer. And to tell us about it, we're joined this morning by the principal investigator, Dr. Daniela Grimm of the Department of Biomedicine Pharmacology at Aarhus University in Denmark and her colleague, Dr. Markus Wieland of the University of Magdeburg. Uh, Dr. Grimm, you had a previous study on the station in which you found that tumor cells behave a little less aggressively in space. Do we know yet why that is? Uh, we use a poorly differentiated cell cancer cell line, which is a very aggressive tumor. Um, this tumor cell line comes from a lymph node metastasis from a 42-year-old male. And this experiment, which we had on uh, a space flight before Cellbox, showed that these ten, uh, cancer cells produces a lot of genes and proteins, which were regulated in a way that it seems to that they promote to shift to a less malignant form. We don't know what is the reason for it because it was first time done, and it was an empiric observation first. But uh, we have found that these cells um, grow three-dimensionally. That means like a ball, and these are round aggregates. We call them spheroids, which are very similar to a metastasis in the blood or a microtumor. They are nearer to the in vivo situation. And the primary focus of Cellbox was that we wanted to repeat uh, the experiments and uh, further elucidate the underlying mechanisms. So that was what you're hoping to, to build on with this current experiment. Yeah, this was the main purpose of the Cellbox experiment was to reproduce the results which we had obtained from the former space experiment. And uh, another important point is that observed effects, uh, we have to exclude that they are not artifact and we have to reproduce them. Um, one important point was that we wanted to focus on the proteins which um, may be involved in 3D growth formation, to, which are involved in spheroid formation. And uh, during the Cellbox mission, we have found interesting proteins which might play a role in the inhibition of this 3D growth. And such proteins are related to a matrix around the cells, it's called extracellular matrix, where a lot of signaling between the cells takes place. And uh, at currently we are working on secreted proteins and have some interest, interested data which we will publish in the near future. Now, your experiment flew to the station on a Dragon cargo ship about 18 months ago. Uh, tell us about what samples it was that you used, that you sent to space, and what was done with them while they were there on the space station? This was a cell line, a thyroid cancer cell line called FTC-133, which we studied in detail near the last 10 years. And uh, it's well known in the scientific uh, um, research area. The cells were seeded in the cell box containers and incubated for 37 for 24 hours uh, in 37 degrees and with 5% CO2 overnight on ground in the laboratory. And the next day the hardware was checked by Airbus and uh, the engineers. Then was the hand over to Nanorex and NASA. Uh, Nanorex and NASA people transported uh, the containers to the launch site and integrated, uh, the, Dragon, uh, integrated um, the samples in the Dragon spacecraft. After the arrival on the ISS, the hardware um, was installed in the Nanorex uh, facility where the cells were kept at 37 degrees. And uh, after 10 days, the cells were fixed with a special fixative, we call it RNA later, uh, for later gene analysis. Uh, in addition, we collected the supernatants, the medium, um, which was analyzed by a United States company. It's called Muriat ABM in Austin, in Texas. Yeah, and uh, after 
when we got everything uh, back from uh, from the dragon, uh, we uh, analyzed the data. And you've had them back for for some time now. Is there is, is there anything that you've seen so far that uh, is encouraging to you? Uh, yes, uh, we have had identified proteins. We have published this also in proteomics um, uh, this year, uh, which are involved in the negative regulation of thyroid formation. And in addition, we have found a variety of biomolecules of secreted factors by the cells, um, which were found in exerted elevations in space samples, not on ground samples. And many of these enzymes which were secreted are responsible to degrade these extracellular matrix proteins, which we have found also uh, in, in the proteomics study. And this is what we do right now. We publish uh, these samples, uh, these data in the near future. Now, ex most experiments on the space station involve collaboration from a lot of different entities. Uh, Dr. Vilan, tell me about the what it took to get uh, this particular experiment in, together and then get it to orbit and get it back? Yes, this was indeed a collaboration of many people involved and one of the most uh, important roles uh, were of course uh, taken by the German Space Agency DLR who offered us the opportunity to take part in this mission and um, they of course are, were collaborating with NASA and SpaceX so thank you to all those uh, uh, companies and, and, and uh, uh, institutions who uh, offered us the opportunity. Then there was Airbus Defense in Space who uh, designed and constructed the cell culturing hardwares to our specifications. Uh, space, laboratories, uh, space Life Sciences Laboratories provided us a laboratory space near KSC where we could prepare for, for the flight, culture the cells and of course see the hardware. Then Nanorex uh, offered the um, infrastructure on board of the ISS where all the uh, cell box hardware could be housed and incubated at the right uh, temperature. And of course, finally, and last but not least, we would also like to extend our thanks to our universities of uh, Aarhus and Magdeburg who always supported our research. Dr. Grimm, are you planning for, uh, for future experiments to try to follow up on what you've learned so far? Yes, we have on SpaceX 8 uh, the ESA Spheroids project. Uh, today we had a teleconference and we heard that the prospected launch date would be in January 3, early this next year. Uh, on this um, mission we will have endothelial cells and we will focus on three-dimensional growth and we will also see whether some growth factors can induce tube formation. Um, we also will focus on several mechanisms of cell death and um, of differentiation and uh, cell rotation changes of these cells. Well, Dr. Grimm, uh, Dr. Uh, Vilant, good luck with your work. I uh, hope you have success as you continue. Dr. Thank Daniela you. Grimm of the, is the principal investigator of the Cellbox thyroid cancer experiment, and Dr. Marcus Vilant, a member of her team. <laughs>